As the Jedi Knight Anakin Skywalker wrestled control of the Flaming Inferno, Chancellor Palpatine Obi-Wan Kenobi and R2-D2 held on for their lives. As the front half of the Invisible Hand crashed heavily into the Coruscant landing platform on the surface below. As they exited into the safety of a Senate shuttle bus, Anakin was praised as a hero by the politicians for saving Palpatine and eliminating Dooku, but the Jedi was focused upon reuniting with his secret wife Senator Padme Amidala, whom he had not seen for a while. To Anakin's delight, Padme announces her pregnancy, but his initial feelings of happiness later turned to worry. Anakin awoke in the middle of the night to nightmares of Padme dying in childbirth, and the senator asks him to tell his master Obi-Wan, but he refuses, deeming his master to be too close to the council. Eventually, Anakin asks Grandmaster Yoda, which actually increased his confusion and concerns, as he is told to let go of his attachment to Padme. But what if Anakin had told Obi-Wan about his marriage to Padme? What would Obi-Wan tell him to do? Would this prevent his turn to the dark side, or make him more vulnerable? As you'll discover, Anakin's revelation could have shifted the course of history. Anakin stood atop of the veranda, gazing into the night sky of Coruscant, frightened for the life of Padme. The Senator of Naboo walks cautiously towards him and pleads with him to tell Obi-Wan, and Anakin looks to the floor. The Jedi Knight is worried that Obi-Wan would expose his marriage to the Jedi Council, and he would be expelled from the Order. But with encouragement from Padme, Anakin summons Obi-Wan into his Padawan quarters the following day. The Jedi Master is curious as to the nature of this meeting, but all becomes clear as Anakin stutters and stumbles over his words. Obi-Wan is amused, as it was no secret to him that Anakin had a marriage to Senator Amidala, but enjoyed Anakin's awkward struggle. Hearing that Anakin was having nightmares about Padme however, Obi-Wan is more concerned, as he could not tell Anakin to abandon his marriage for the sake of the Jedi Code. Obi-Wan decides that as he had access to some of the most advanced wealth of Jedi knowledge in the archives, he would learn how to stop Padme from dying and pass the knowledge to Anakin, hopefully blocking his fears. Anakin is now worried that his master would be expelled for such a move, but Obi-Wan reassures him that his priority was to save Padme. With a great weight off of his shoulders for now, Anakin is next summoned to Chancellor Palpatine's office. The secret Dark Lord of the Sith was hoping for Anakin to be conflicted and vulnerable, but to his annoyance, he sensed an unusual calmness over the Jedi, and he pondered whether to appoint Anakin as his representative on the Council. In the end, Palpatine decides that he should, as he needed Anakin to be opposed to the Council, as well as someone who could report on the Jedi's dealings. Entering the Council chamber, Palpatine's prediction of Anakin not being appointed a master becomes true, but Anakin is terrified rather than angry. Obi-Wan pulls him to one side after the meeting, and reassures Anakin that the decision had nothing to do with his marriage with Padme, rather the stage in the war, and that he would have his vote of confidence to become a master once the mysterious Sith Lord had been caught. Obi-Wan watches Anakin disappear down the temple corridor, knowing that he had disobeyed the council himself, as he had not told him of the mission to spy on the Chancellor. Behind him, he hears the faint footsteps of Yoda, and Obi-Wan could sense the Grand Master understood his predicament. Yoda summons Obi-Wan to his quarters, and instructs him to watch Anakin as closely as possible, even if that meant observing the Chancellor as well. Obi-Wan respectfully bowed his head, searching for his Padawan in the Force. The Jedi Master walks into the Temple Hangar, and takes one of the station speeders into Coruscant Entertainment District, sensing Anakin's presence growing closer. The curious Jedi Master walks inside the Galaxy's Opera House, with many of the other civilians, and found his way into the Mon Calamari ballet performance, as his eyes narrowed as seeing Palpatine and Anakin seated together. Obi-Wan smoothly took a seat next to the Jedi Knight, and Palpatine welcomed the presence of the Jedi Master. Continuing to watch the performance, Obi-Wan became slowly suspicious of Palpatine's intrigue in Anakin, and afterwards, they convened in Padme's apartment. Anakin reveals that Palpatine had been empathetic of Anakin's dislike for the Order, as well as offering a way to save Padme. The Jedi Master is horrified at the thought, and it confirms some of the suspicions made by Mace Windu and Yoda that the dark side surrounded Palpatine, and they needed to bring him to justice. Obi-Wan ran back to the temple, and to the station council members, who were discussing what to do with Grievous. The Jedi Master instructs them to forget about the Kalish warrior for now, and focus on the newly discovered threat of Palpatine, whom Anakin had uncovered to be a powerful force user. 
The Jedi had to move fast before the Sith escaped again. That is it for part 1 of What If Anakin Revealed His Marriage to Obi-Wan. If you'd like to see a part 2 soon, please like this video, turn on that notification bell, click that subscribe button on this channel, as well as on my other channel What If Films. And as always, leave a comment on what what if you'd all like to see next, and how I can improve my videos. Thank you all very much for watching, and see you next time.